next public meeting. <clears throat> With that, what I want to do is go ahead and just uh, let everyone know. So if you do have technical difficulties during tonight's meeting, you go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll see if we can kind of help you out. Everyone's microphone and everyone's camera have been disabled for ease of kind of having the public meeting. Uh, so that so if you're trying to disable it, you can't until we uh, actually set, uh, conclude the presentation. So with that said, what I want to do is go ahead and introduce Tom Burke, who will go ahead and be our presenter for tonight. And from there, I'll let Tom take it away. Tom. Sorry, I had to find refine my microphone. Uh, thanks, Mike. Um, as Mike mentioned, we're here tonight to talk about Two comprehensive plan amendments related to the Fairfax County Parkway and Franklin County Supreme Court Parkways and Berkshire Parkways are going to the uh, Planning Commission uh, over the next few weeks. Um, so we have Plan Amendment 2021 CWT2, uh, which is and uh, 2019 uh, Roman numeral 3T1. These are both going to the Planning Commission on Wednesday, March 8th, next week at 7:30 p.m. And the Board of Supervisors are scheduled to have a public hearing on the same two plan amendments on March 21st, 2023 at 4 p.m. And they're both in person at the Government Center. So before we jump into the parkways, um, I wanted to touch really quickly one slide on the comprehensive plan. Just so you know, uh, the basis, uh, obviously, these are comprehensive plan amendments. And uh, what we're doing, the comprehensive plan is required by state law for funding. It serves as a guide for elected officials, county staff, and citizens uh, to make help make decisions on the natural and built environment. Uh, within the comprehensive plan, there's a transportation plan map. It's kind of zoomed out. It's hard to, to show a 400 square mile area without it being kind of um, zoomed out. But uh, that's the, the map on the right is our transportation plan map. It has long range transportation recommendations on it, including road widenings, uh, interchanges. It has uh, BRT, for example, on uh, Richmond Highway. It has um, a lot of transport, high level transportation recommendations. And I, I, I do want to start off also by saying comprehensive plan amendments are long range. Some of them might occur quicker than others, but there's not always a schedule to them. They can be 10, 20, 30 years out. Uh, their comprehensive plan transportation recommendations are essentially uh, to, to meet the future need of the land use. So it goes hand in hand with land use. Land use is uh, projected out into the future. And we basically say these are the transportation recommendations that we need to satisfy that future growth. So the, the, the bigger of the transportation uh, of the comprehensive plan amendments is 2021 CWT2, and it encompasses the entirety of the Frank of the Fairfax County and Franconia Springfield Parkways. Um, I note here that we started work in 2017, but even before that we worked. So 2013, the Board of Supervisors said, hey, Department of Transportation, we really need a fresh look at uh, the, the parkways and the comprehensive plan because in a lot of cases, we have recommendations from the 1990s or maybe even before, and it was about time that we take an overall fresh look at the parkways to see if the comprehensive plan still meets the needs of the future growth, which is anticipated within the counties. So the, the main purpose of the of the effort was to, to look at all the different transportation recommendations along the parkways and determine whether they still fit the bill, you know, and, and are, are thought to be what is needed. If not, what changes do we need to make? And um, this, this uh, we did this study, uh, we wrapped it up in 2021. And that's when the board endorsed our recommendations and authorized this, this first plan amendment. And it is nearly, I, I do wanna, it, it encompasses six of the eight um, magisterial districts in the county. Everything, everyone except uh, Providence and Mason districts have a part of the two parkways, and it covers about 35 miles in length. Uh, the other comprehensive plan amendment is uh, 2019 Roman numeral 3 T1, and it is very specific to the intersection of Fairfax County Parkway and Burke Center Parkway. While we were 
I should say, while we were working on our study, VDOT was also working on the design and engineering for the segment from Route 29 to Route 123. I'll get into that a little bit later, but VDOT is gearing up to actually widen that section of the Fairfax County Parkway to six lanes and build a great separate interchange that Pope's Head Road, which is one of the more congested intersections, not only in the county, but within the region. Um, we will we'll definitely get into that, but while the VDOT was working on their studies, there was a lot of discussion about how to treat the intersection of Burke Center Parkway. Before we get into too much detail, I did want to make sure everyone knew that we had an extensive public outreach through the process. Um, in, in the fall of 2018, we had our first series of public meetings. This was pre-pandemic, so we were actually able to meet in person with the community. We met at Armstrong Elementary School in the Reston Herndon area, Sangster Elementary School down in the, um, the, the Burke West Springfield area, and we also met at, I believe, in round one at Willow Springs. So that was more of the central Fairfax area. In the, and we talked a lot about the different types of options. It was at this meeting when we heard loud and clear. Because early on, we wanted to, to put everything on the table, including um, not necessarily because we were recommending it, but just because it could be an option. It, you know, there's already HOV in the comprehensive plan. Could HOT, which is like express lanes on 66, 495, and 95, would that potentially be a solution for the Fairfax County and Prank County Springfield Parkways? We heard loud and clear at the in that fall 2018 round of public outreach. It is not something that anyone wants to see. So uh, we very quickly took tolls off the table. In spring of 2019, we had some more meetings with the public in person, lots of lively discussions. We got a lot of good feedback. We talked about all the different directions we could go. Do we need more more lanes, more capacity, intersections that are problematic? You know, what do we think of interchanges? Um, uh, also multimodal, uh, multimodal aspect. There's a lot of discussion about bicycle pedestrian needs and the potential for transit use, which right now is not very um, prominent or even existent, but uh, there was some discussion about whether transit could be, buses could be, make better use of the parkway. And then finally, in the summer of 2020, you remember in the winter slash spring of 2020, the pandemic hit and we uh, had our first round of virtual meetings. We were one of the first projects uh, to to get back on the, the horse, if you will, with our public outreach. And we, we started doing virtual public meetings so that we could continue our work, even though the pandemic was kind of inhibiting our ability to meet with the public. One of the bigger questions, as I mentioned earlier, is HOV. HOV is recommended in the current comprehensive plan all the way from Route 7 in Drainsville, all the way to Franconia, Springfield, Metro Rail, and VRE Station in Springfield. The entire length has, if you, if you were to go back to our transportation plan map, there are red diamonds all along the, those segments of the parkways, and that indicates that you know, back in the 1990s, um, maybe it was an idea at that time that HOV would, would work well on the Fairfax County Parkway and Brink County Springfield Parkway. And a, a big uh, objective of this study was to retest that and determine whether HOV was something that was appropriate for the parkways. And to be honest, you know, we, we, we forecasted traffic into the future using our data and models. And uh, when we tested three plus, if you're familiar with 66 and 495 and 95, in order to ride for free, you have to have three plus people in the uh, in your vehicle in order to qualify for the HOV or the or the no fare. Uh, so uh, we tested three plus for these HOV lanes on the parkways, and we got very little demand. We just we did not see a lot of of uh, our models just were not projecting any demand for HOV, and we said but we really didn't want to leave it behind without an honest you know attempt to make it work. So we tried two plus. Obviously, two plus is easier to, to satisfy than three plus. All you need is one extra people, one extra person in the car along with the driver. And even two plus did not register a lot of demand in our models. And when we did meet with the public in 2018, 2019, and 2020, never at any point did we get any kind of sense that the public was um, fiercely loyal to this plan of having HOV. No one really mentioned it. <clears throat> and so eventually, uh, we did decide we should remove it from the plan. However, all the six, we have six lane recommendations and for many segments of the parkways, 
And we would keep that six lane recommendation, but instead of making those new lanes HOV, we would make them H, I'm sorry, general purpose lanes so that anyone could use them because we definitely did find a uh, future demand that was beyond the four lanes that's out there in a lot of the segments of the parkways. One, uh, con one compromise was HOV feeders. If we could make it easier for people to get into the HOV lanes on the Dulles Toll Road on 66 and on 95, uh, we should do that. So we called them HOV feeders. It's a concept where instead of having you drive into the general purpose lanes on the Dulles Toll Road 66 or 95 and then fight your way over to the HOV lanes, we thought it would be great if we eventually could have direct connections so that if you're HOV and you're destined for the HOV, you could take special lanes that would drop you right into the HOV lanes to save time and make it more beneficial. Uh, this was definitely a multimodal. We looked at things through a multimodal lens. Transit is a bit of a challenge. We, we did get feedback from the public. Uh, generally, people would like transit and buses to be more prominent. I mean, we've even heard uh, light rail. Metro rail on the Fairfax County Parkway and Franconia Springfield Parkway. Unfortunately, if you don't have density, uh, you don't have ridership. And mo other than Reston, Fair Lakes, Springfield, and Fort Belvoir, which are the four big activity centers that the parkways connect, in between are very low density, large uh, lot size residential, very few um, commercial employment centers. So there's not a lot of people living or working in between the activity centers, which means that um, there's not a lot of people that are going to be getting on and off the buses. And generally when buses don't have a lot of ridership, they they typically don't work and they get dropped. So you know, we, we very much want transit to work on the parkways. The Fairfax connector has a route that ha it has been planning that would connect Herndon Metro Rail Station to the Frank County Springfield Metro Rail Station. However, it would only stop at park and ride lots. So, for example, if you're familiar with the Fairfax County Parkway, there's a park and ride lot at South Run, and there's a park and ride lot at Gambrel Road. So, the buses on this potential route that the uh, the Fairfax connector has in their transit development plan would stop at these major uh, parking facilities to pick people up and drop people off, but it wouldn't be stopping like a typical bus um, along the parkway dropping people off and picking people up. We definitely do want uh, transit to work and we think the additional up to six lanes of general purpose lanes will help transit, it'll help all vehicles. And there are intelligent, you know, advanced ways to, to make buses work as well. Queue jumpers, for example, would allow buses to, to jump ahead of queues at traffic signals. So these are things that we think are compromises that could help make transit work. We heard loud and clear from the public through the process that um, we, we want the Fairfax County Parkway to be more wa walkable and bikeable and safer for, for bicyclists and pedestrians. Right now, there's a trail on one side of the Fairfax County Parkway, and I, I believe uh, where there are trails on the Frank County Springfield, it's on one side. There are some gaps. There's a gap through Fair Lakes, there's a gap around Burke Center, there's a gap down around Fort Belvoir. So first and foremost, we think those gaps need to be filled so we have a continuous bicycle pedestrian connection from Drainsville to Route 1 and into Springfield. And then beyond that, there was a desire to have trails on both sides of the parkways, because if you're on the other side, if the trail is on one side and you live on the other side and you're destined to something on the other side, you'd have to cross a high speed, busy six lane roadway in order to get to the trail and then you'd have to cross it again. So if you had trails on both sides, uh, that would eliminate a lot of the unnecessary crossings, make things safer and more walkable and bikeable. Uh, where feasible, uh, the goal would be to have trails on both sides. So with that, uh, I'm going to jump right into the segments. We broke the parkways into five segments for ease of presentation. Say, you know, like I said, it's 35 miles. So we wanted to, to break it out into more easily digestible segments, if you will. The first one being from Route 7 in Drainsville down to Franklin Farm Road. We decided that, um, I, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but we would remove the HOV recommendation, but maintain the six lane recommendation. Um, we think that we need to pay particular attention to the Wheelie Avenue crossing. We don't think an interchange is necessary, but something a little bit more advanced than a traditional traffic signal is probably going to be needed. We did look at a 
innovative intersection there. So as we, if wheelie were to get worse, we'd be able to work on potentially replacing the signal with something a little bit more advanced. Barron Cameron is a relatively new interchange, the interchange of Barron Cameron and Eldon Street. We, it's a single point urban interchange with uh, multiple lane ramps on all four of the ramps. There's two lanes. So we think that that interchange is actually suitable for the future demand. So we're, rec we're recommending that that be removed. And you can see, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but this red X means that there's a, the planned interchange circle on the comp plan that we would remove. Conversely, there's a uh, circles at both Sunset Hills slash Spring Street and the Dulles Toll Road. Uh, we're showing those as orange boxes, but they was we're now uh, proposing that they would be maintained as circles. They're existing interchanges, but we don't think that they're going to stand the test of time. We think they're going to need some additional modifications because in a couple of cases like Spring Street, the signal is directly on the parkway. It'd be great if we could remove the signal from the parkway, put the signals on Spring Street and Sunset Hills to help make the traffic flow a little bit better on the on the parkway. There is an interchange planned at Sunrise Valley that needs to stay in the plan because that's one of the another choke point um, where there's a lot of congestion that builds up today, let alone in the future. Um, McLaren Road Extension is a it's a planned roadway extension from Lawyers Road to West Ox, and it crosses the parkway. And the current plan says we would have an interchange there. When we use our updated models and data, we found lower demand. I think. Uh, we weren't going to judge the the need for the crossroad, but we did judge the need for the interchange because that's more related to the, the parkway itself. And we we think a traffic signal would work. So the red X means that the interchange symbol in the comp plan would go away. And finally, Franklin Farm Road is another choke point uh, on the parkways with it. It just generates a lot of backup, especially in the afternoon peak. And uh, that is not planned for an interchange at the current time. We're actually recommending that we add the circle at Franklin Farm Road. Segment two is a little bit easier to go through because a lot of it is being covered by, by, by VDOT right now. Some of you are aware Virginia Department of Transportation is looking to widen the section of the Fairfax County Parkway from Route 29 to Route 123. Uh, it will become a six lane facility and the, the main, like talking about choke points, Pope's Head Road, <clears throat> in the middle of the segment is one of the worst congested intersections in the county and maybe even the region. That's going to get a great separate interchange. That work is being done. Uh, VDOT actually anticipates starting construction on the interchange of Pope's Head later this year. Uh, the widening from 29 to the south uh, at the, towards the end of the year and then starting the southern part of the widening down closer to 123 in mid 2024. So over the next 18 months or so, you might be seeing construction commence on this section of Fairfax County Parkway. Uh, the Burke Center Parkway I mentioned earlier was um, enough of an issue with the public and the community that it became its own comprehensive plan, but everyone agreed that we could just kind of roll it into the bigger analysis. This half circle symbol will go into the comprehensive plan. We are recommending that the southbound movement from the Fairfax County Parkway to the Burke Center Parkway eastbound become a flyover, so a partial interchange. Uh, VDOT is going to implement time of day turn restrictions. In the morning, you won't be able to make that southbound left. Uh, rest of the day, you will, but that's to accommodate the a large amount of traffic that's coming north in the morning. A lot of people in Lorton, Prince William County, come up the parkway, come up Ox Road, come up Fairfax County Parkway. They're going to rest in Tyson's, Dulles, and um, it's just a lot of traffic flow in the morning going northbound. And we and VDOT both agreed that if we eliminate that southbound left at Burke Center Parkway, um, at least in the morning peak, uh, we'd be able to make traffic flow a lot better. The community was not crazy about that. So they said, well, we need the county to look at this intersection longer term. Maybe we do this for uh, a little while, but longer term, we need an inter a partial interchange. And we actually agree that a partial interchange is probably something that would be uh, a good idea on the longer term. Section three or segment three is another interesting one. Had a lot of lively discussions with the community at Sangster Elementary School in 2018 and 2019. They really like, I mean, they like the way things are and they would rather not see the Fairfax County Park, uh, Parkway widened. 
They don't want to see an interchange at Huntsman Boulevard, which is a major congestion point. So we we listened and we did our best to try to uh, to to minimize impacts in this area. They want their trees to stay. They they don't want a bigger barrier dividing their communities. We tested a four lane uh, scenario where the parkway is not widened. Parkway itself worked, but we're not sure to what extent area roadways would be impacted. So if, if the future Fairfax County Parkway only has four lanes instead of six lanes, it stands to reason that maybe some of those trips that would have used a six lane parkway will instead use Ox Road or Braddock Road or Old Keene Mill Road. And um, we didn't have the resources to analyze all of those additional roadways. So we're keeping the six lane recommendation, but we want to assure everyone in the community that we will not even think about widening that section to six lanes until or unless we do additional analysis and we we, we look closer at uh, the four lane option and the impacts to the other area roadways. So um, there's some hope that potentially this, this recommendation could go away at some point in the future, but we weren't prepared as part of this effort to eliminate it. So you'll see the six lane recommendation stay. Whose road is an existing interchange that uh, is, does not need to be modified in the future, so we're recommending that be removed. Huntsman Boulevard. Um, I had a little trouble explaining this yesterday at our first meeting. Huntsman Boulevard, we tested this quadrant uh, concept where we basically build this roadway around the giant plaza. If you're familiar with Huntsman Boulevard, there's a giant with some a little bit of a shopping plaza in there. and. The Huntsman Boulevard intersection is a major congestion point. Uh, way too many people trying to turn left and left turns generally lead to, to intersections breaking down. So we actually looked at a concept called a quadrant uh, where left turns are eliminated from the main intersection. You, you would make your left turns using this new connector road. Uh, if anyone has any questions or deeper, I don't want to spend too get too much into the weeds. If anyone has any questions at the end, I'll be providing my contact information. I'd be glad to share it with you. But that isn't a concept that we think would work and it would save us from having to plan for an interchange at this location because the community did not like the idea of you know, great separated structure being put in at this intersection location. Section through Fort Belvoir North down to Route 1. Um, there's a couple new interchanges. The, the newest segment of the Fairfax County Parkway from Rolling Road down to I-95 was built probably 12, 13 years ago. The interchanges at Barter Road and Boudinot Drive are pretty new and modern, and we do not think those need to be upgraded in the future, so those stay. Conversely, we think the I-95 interchange and the Telegraph interchange need to stay in the plan, even though those are existing interchanges, they need to stay in the plan because they're not going to work long term in the state that they're currently in. They're going to need to um, we're going to need to develop some modifications to help traffic flow. And then there's new interchanges that we are maintaining in the plan at John J. Kingman. Just a ton of employment at Fort Belvoir go, goes in and out at the John J. Kingman gate. Uh, INSCOM, uh, Defense Logistics Agency. Vita, I'm sorry, Fort, Fort Belvoir has a lot of big uh, employment centers at the, at the Kingman gate. And then there's a planned interchange at Richmond Highway that would need to stay in place. And um, there is there is a lot of call for making the Lowestdale Road, the Terminal Road, and the Backley Road intersections work better because this is the last choke point or congestion point that I'll highlight. Uh, there's just a lot of vehicles trying to make turns at Lowestdale, so we're proposing. Uh, oh shoot, um, we're proposing a connect to connect the Lowestdale connection down to the um, Terminal Road. Terminal Road currently cul-de-sacs. What if we punched it through to Lowestdale at Newington? And then we provided an additional connection on the west side as well where the tank farm is. Because right now, everyone that works down in that industrial area where the tank farm is, if there was any kind of uh, emergency, everyone funnels out through one connection. And there's a lot of concern that you know people wouldn't be able to get out. So we're proposing for, for traffic circulation and safety reasons that a secondary access be added. And I know we're running a little bit low on time, but I just wanted to uh, the last segment is the Franconia Springfield Parkway. We're not really recommending too many changes. The, uh, the one thing, and I forgot to mention in segment three, there's a segment of the Fairfax County Parkway from Siding Stricker to Rolling Road that's planned for eight lanes. And then the Franconia Springfield Parkway is planned for eight lanes to Frontier Drive at the Metro Station. We're actually recommending, we were able to um, confidently model and analyze a six lane um, scenario and we think it will work fine. 
So we're actually saying eight lanes is too much. Let's just keep it at the existing six lanes and not widen anymore. However, there are interchanges at Bonnie Mill Lane and Beulah Street that need to, ma to, to maintain in the plan. And I-95, if you're familiar with the area, the interchange only serves uh, the express lanes on I-95. You cannot access the general purpose lanes. So if you want to go north or south on 95, you can't really use, and you're not using the express lanes, you can't really use this interchange. We think that long-term that interchange needs to be made into a full interchange that serves the general purpose as well. And wrapping things up, next steps. As I, as I alluded to a little bit earlier when the comp plan, these are pro most of these projects, except for the uh, projects that are uh, that BDOT is currently designing and, and, and soon constructing from 29 to 123. They are not scheduled, they're not prioritized yet, they're not funded. So there is not really any time frame. And we get a lot of questions, and, and I feel bad when I can't give them a, a, a solid answer. Uh, you know, uh, all of the other projects outside of 29 to 123 are kind of long range. They're supposed to, uh, they're in the comp plan to meet the, the land use growth that's anticipated in the county and in the region, uh, but they do not at this point in time have a schedule. Uh, the Board of Supervisors, it's at their purview to roll those projects from the comp plan into the transportation priorities plan. And at that point, they can uh, fund the next phases such as engineering, design, right of way acquisition, utility relocation, and eventually construction. Uh, and then in addition, we don't always want, we can't always fund these projects through the county's budget alone. Uh, so there's other funding sources through the region, through the state, the Council of Governments, the Virginia Department of Transportation, the, the Transportation Authority, all have means to, to fund transportation infrastructure projects as well. By being in the comprehensive plan, that makes them eligible to be applied for, and we can supplement county funds with the regional and state funds, potentially. So those would be, I mean, the next steps more imminently are the public hearings next week and then on the 21st, but um, when or if, comprehensive plan is amended with these new recommendations, we'll be able to um, take those next steps to move them into the TPP, get funding, additional funding opportunities. So with that, I'm sure there's a lot of questions. This is my contact information. If we're unable to answer questions thoroughly today or this evening, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email. This is our project website. Mike put it in the chat as well. So there's a lot of uh, good information there too. There's a staff report for the plan amendments. There's a report from our study. So there's a lot of good information on the project website. Mike. All right, thank you, Tom. Appreciate that. So what I'm going to do is take. There's been a, several questions been put in the chat throughout the course of the actual presentation. So we'll try to cover those first. Uh, when it comes time, if you've raised your hand to speak, uh, if you've put a few questions in the chat, I'll probably see if I can get other people to ask their questions first, just to, in a uh, matter of fairness. Um, there is a raise your hand button. For some people, it should be at the top of the screen. And I know for others, for some reason, if you have an, update, an updated or a non-updated version of Teams, it might appear at the bottom. Um, when you do raise your hand, I will actually enable your microphone. And when I do so, if you you have to unmute yourself, but if you could limit yourself to one question, please, or if you're gonna ask two at once, then no more. And then what, what I'm gonna do is remute you and put you back in the queue so we can get everyone else a chance to have some questions asked and answered. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and take a few off of the chat window and we'll then we'll go from there. Uh, let's see here. So the first question that came in, Tom, it was actually mentioned in the segment one, just for just to kind of help reference. Uh, reference to what is meant by maintain plant intersection at Fairfax County Parkway and Sunrise Valley Drive uh, it said it was unclear what is the trigger from maintain current to planned grade separated interchange so I probably probably didn't make this clear enough and I apologize but the comprehensive plan has a set of recommendations for the parkways in the current comprehensive plan and in that current transportation plan and so maintain basically says the recommendation is already in the plan and our analysis says keep it in the plan. So that's what we mean by maintain. Add or remove would be where we're saying it's in the plan, but we don't need it anymore, so remove it. And add is it's not in the plan, but we need it. So Franklin Farm, for example, would be an add. 
uh, remove the HOV because that's in the plan, but we decided it's not worthwhile. And yeah, so I don't know if that answered, but to your specific, to specifically the Sunrise Valley is already in the plan and we're saying let's keep it in. Great, thank you. All right, the next question, are there any noise abatement plans for Route 123 to Franconia Springfield Parkway? No, so uh, the only noise abatement that would be currently out there would be the, for the VDOT project from Route 29 to Route 123. Um, noise abatement occurs when the project is designed and engineered. Um, you really need to have those specific details in place um, to, to really nail down where the walls need to go. So we have some, or VDOT has some locations for walls north of 123, but unfortunately um, at the long range planning stage where we don't even know how long it's gonna take for these projects to be prioritized and funded, we do not identify noise abatement in this, in this question south of 123. Okay, thank you. The next question that came in, uh, it has to, it's in the Fair Lakes area. This person says, doesn't understand the removal of interchanges at Monument Drive and Fair Lakes Parkway. The interchanges are there now, will they be eliminated? I think it's the clarifying question again. Yeah, again, so the comprehensive plan has circles which indicate interchanges. And it gets a little tricky because we're kind of doing two different approaches here. Those are two interchanges that have been built recently and they're modern and uh, they're high capacity and they should be sufficient to stand the test of time. So Monument and Fair Lakes Parkway, those interchanges, they're new enough, they're going to stand the test of time so we can remove those circles. It does get a little, the wording, I apologize, but we're not removing the interchange, we're removing the interchange symbol. And in the case of, um, well, I, I'm not sure that we have any here, but we've had some other intersection interchanges that already exist and we're saying keep the circle because they're not going to stand the test of time and they need some additional work. Great. All right. Thank you. Uh, so another one came in. What is the basis to remove the interchange at Baron Cameron versus modify the interchange at Spring Street? Baron Cameron is the main east west road connecting town of Herndon to Route 7 and easy access to Fairfax County Parkway. Will relocating to Spring Street set up bottlenecking into and out of town of Herndon? And reduce access to the rest in town center from the north. So I think Tom, if if you can just kind of, it's the same thing as before. It's the terminology that that's been used. Um, but if you want to take one more opportunity to so, kind of say what Baron Cameron recommendation is and what the Spring Street recommendation is. So Baron Cameron is a, a relatively new interchange. It has two lanes coming in, two lanes coming out. So it's high capacity, and it works pretty efficiently. So in our modeling and analysis, we we showed it working really well out into the year 2040. Um, conversely, the Spring Street interchange, all of the movements are on the Herndon side. Uh, there's a traffic signal on the Fairfax County Parkway. Ideally, we would remove that that traffic signal from the parkway to make the, the parkway more free flow. We would what we tested was more of a diamond interchange where you put ramps to and from the north, northbound lanes on the rest inside. So it's more like a diamond. Um, but again, we what we tested is not necessarily what will be built. There'll be a lot more opportunity for uh, analysis and outreach when these interchanges are prioritized. But but the reason that Spring Street is remaining a circle and Baron Cameron is being removed is because Baron, we found Baron Cameron to work fine out into the year 2040. Spring Street, however, broke down and did not work very well. Okay, the next <clears throat> one probably is a noise abatement. It's a noise abatement one, but it says for the section between Dulles Toll Road south toward Franklin Farm Road, are there any noise abatement plans specifically between Fox Mill Road to Sunrise Valley Drive? As I mentioned earlier, noise abatement is handled when the road is actually funded for design and engineering. So at this point in time, since it's only a long range plan with no schedule, uh, no timeline, uh, we would not have noise abatement in place at this point in time. It would occur when the board prioritizes the widening of that section and we actually design it and, and engineer it. Okay. The next question is, is great info, unfortunately too fast for me. 
how soon will a recording of the meeting be available? And what I'll say is we will get this recording up, um, send it over to our Office of Public Affairs and have them get it up and available as quickly as possible. We also have this recording that's also available from the community meetings that were done as well and from the Board Transportation Committee that we that Tom gave the same presentation to. So those are all available um, just as a means of that. But if you want to email us, we can see it, get you exact links. So Tom has his contact information. Happy to do so. But again, all this is also on the project website. But if it's a little bit much, let, just email Tom and we'll go ahead and give you the specific links. OK, the next question is if a traffic light is installed at the future McLaren Road and the Parkway, won't the backups at Franklin Farm and West Ox just be moved north to here? We modeled, and when I say model, we have a, a travel demand model that forecasts based on land use, based on transportation network, it, it forecasts traffic uh, to the different roads in the area. And when we model based on the land uses in the comp plan, we showed that Franklin Farm would uh, would improve with the interchange. And if you're putting an interchange at Franklin Farm, you're probably not uh, as enticed if you're a user of that inter intersection to move north to McLaren because the interchange will make things work a lot better. But we looked at, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is we looked at everything together um, and our analysis showed that the you know, the West Docks, the McLaren, the Fox Mill, all of the intersections worked better when we were fixing the interchanges up at Sunrise Valley and at Franklin Farm. And uh, we found less demand for McLaren Road extension in general. That's why we did not think that a, an interchange was necessary. A traffic signal would be sufficient. Thank you. OK, the next question that we have in the chat is the last one that we have at this moment. It says the maps for the comp plan note preliminary highway service or service drive ordinance requirement. See area plan overview text. Where is this text found? Service drive language goes back. Quite a while. Um, I don't know if Mike or Jeff who are on the call with me have any additional insights, but um, we typically do not. I mean, I don't even know if. I, know, I see the, the notes on our transportation maps, but I'm not even sure there's a whole lot of text left after several updates. Probably we do have a specific citation and we'll go ahead and and, put, and grab it. If you want to email Tom, Tom, can you put up your the last slide again? And we'll go ahead and put that and give that to you exactly. But just for everyone's sake, there are particular roads in the county where the service um, service drive ordinance in which it says this road basically should have a service drive. As the county has developed and grown over time, the need for the service drive kind of conflict with the need for con or the desire and the need for having kind of a more commercial revitalization type area where we want to have our community business centers. Uh, an example of that is on the Richmond Highway corridor where this service drive ordinance actually pertained for a while in which we went through the uh, mechanism with the board of waiving the ordinance, basically requiring service drives so that we could have development more front the street and kind of try to help maintain the character of what was particularly uh, desired. There are other areas of the county where the service drive ordinance is still in effect. Um, for example, Route 50, there are service drives in the western part of the county that are there as well. There are also service drives between the Beltway and Seven Corners in some instances as well. So it, it just matters where we are and then kind of the context in which the comprehensive plan is calling for service drives or not calling for service drives. But we can get this specific citation text for you. OK, with that, there is uh, one person, Mark Malcolm. You have your hand raised. I'm going to enable your microphone. You can unmute yourself when you're ready. Thank you very much. The, uh, it's a follow on question. To the first question I asked you mentioned that you did modeling it's for Spring Street to fix it would be a diamond interchange. When you looked at maintain the plan regarding Fairfax County Parkway and Sunrise Valley Drive in the north. What did you use as a model for the GSI for that interchange? Okay. Thank you. For Sunrise Valley interchange, we assumed a single point urban interchange, which would be somewhat similar to uh, what we have at Baron Cameron 
It's a, a tight interchange where the ramps don't bulb out too much and they converge in the middle, whether it's above or below the free flow parkway. Uh, so it doesn't impact a lot of properties. But um, I say that with a little bit of a grain of salt because um, we, the long range plan, we basically test things to, to give us a level of comfort that we can make things work. Eventually, when Sunrise Valley is prioritized and funded by the board, because congestion just gets so bad that the board says we have to do something now. Um, at that point in time, we will go back out to the public. We'll solicit more feedback. We'll do more analysis, probably a little bit more alternatives analysis. So what, I guess what I'm saying is we tested a, a single point urban interchange similar to Baron Cameron, but uh, that is not necessarily what has to be built. I, I think there'll be more of an evalu evaluation before we, we decide what to go with. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dennis, you have your hand raised. Your microphone is now enabled. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me all right? Ken? Yeah, my name is Dennis Golikowski, and I'm on the Board of Trustees for the Brooks Center Conservancy. My question concerns the intersection of Brooks Center Parkway and Fairfax County Parkway. Um, if you put that slide up on the sure. diagram where you show the flyover, did I understand that with that, you have the right turn heading northbound coming off Burke Center Parkway onto the Fairfax County Parkway, or is it coming southbound on the Fairfax County Parkway to go onto Burke Center Parkway or both? The flyover would only satisfy one movement, and that's the southbound Fairfax County Parkway to the eastbound Burke Center Parkway. So that would be on a structure and you'd be able to make that turning movement at any point in time um, with that. And again, this goes back to my response to the last question. When we tested it, we thought it would be helpful not only for traffic operations, but for safety to close the median and otherwise only allow right in, right out to Burke Center. So right. one, mo one movement would be eliminated and that's the Burke Center Parkway to Fairfax County Parkway southbound. That movement would not be there anymore. I believe BDOT is also implementing something similar to that. So basically, if you're on Burke Center Parkway and you want to go southbound, you would need to use Route 120 Roberts Road as an alternative connection. Okay, and then uh, the second part of that, you mentioned the bike lanes, and I'm familiar with the bike lanes on that portion of the parkway. As anybody... Uh, in the process, either VDOT or you guys, done a survey of existing bike lanes to see if there's a justified usage. Because I've been to other town hall meetings in other parts of the county in the local area where bike lanes have been put in on streets that have adjusted the traffic flow. And several of the residents indicate that they've been driving up and down those streets for many years and they don't see a single bike on there. So I guess my question is, is there any um, headcount of the number of usages that's ongoing on these bike lanes? All right, thank you. Um, Mike can definitely chime in too if he wants. Uh, we don't really collect, you know, for every bike lane in the county, we do not collect usage. Usually when we put bike lanes in, VDOT's gonna be restriping the roadway anyway. So it's a low cost um, addition uh, to, you know, to the community. Uh, and I should also say that on-road bicycle lanes are more and more being uh, saved for lower volume, lower speed roadways. Uh, over the last 10 years or so since the bicycle master plan was uh, was adopted, uh, our thinking has changed. You know, back then we might have put uh, on-road bike lanes on some of the higher volume, higher speed roads. But nowadays we, if you have more than 5,000 daily trips or if the speeds are Generally higher, we typically will uh, go to an, a separated bicycle facility. And just for the record, the Fairfax County Parkway totally off off the the road. There's no on road bicycle lanes proposed with the Fairfax County Parkway or Frank County Springfield. They would be bicycles would be theoretically on the shared use path. Yep, thanks. And we are keeping them with with uh, NACTO guidance as well, which is kind of recommending more of the off-road facilities and so where it's appropriate and where we have the space we'll def we definitely try to make sure we accommodate we try to plan for all ages and abilities so that's kind of what we're um, working towards these days okay um tom a question is in 
Service drive ordinance question relates to diagram page one. Is the plan suggesting that there will be service drives between Fairfax Parkway and Burke Center Parkway? Between on which room? It's okay. between uh, service drive or suggestion that there would be service drives between Fairfax Parkway and Burke Center Parkway. So I but, think. But they intersect some. Yeah, I'm a little confused. Uh, I didn't know that there are there. Does the service drive ordinance pertain to either Burke Center Parkway or Fairfax Center Parkway? I'm not aware that. I'd, it ha I'd have to look to into Burke that. Center. Yeah, we'd have to look at that a little bit more. It says to diagram uh, P1. So. I guess that would be in segment one. I'm trying to, sorry. Let's see if I can get a little. If, ah, raise hand. Hold on. Let's see if we can get it. Sorry. Uh, okay. Oaks trustee, your microphone is enabled. You could help clarify the question. And. What I'm also going to do is sometimes people have a little bit of issue trying to get in and unmute themselves, so I'm going to do one more thing and move you up. See if I can kind of get you that way. Oaks trustee, I see you've enabled your microphone. Can you hear us? And if you're having trouble speaking, sometimes what happens is uh, your um, settings aren't set quite right. So there's something called three dots at the time there's three dots or more at the top uh, you can go into device settings and click on that and just make sure that your microphone is actually going to where you want it to be so if you're listening on a headset or you're listening through a speaker device in the in the computer sometimes it won't actually register so check to make sure your microphone is where it needs to be so again click on the three dots device settings and go and click on and go down to microphone it's about a third of the way down the screen to show up on the right side. And I'll give you uh, a moment to see if you can kind of find that. Meanwhile, while we're um, waiting to see if we can kind of get the audio uh, figured out a little bit, uh, just to remind everybody, <clears throat> this is going to Planning Commission public hearing next week, next Wednesday. The Planning Commission starts at 730. The agenda gets set at the beginning of the meeting, so it's hard to really tell you where in the order that the uh, plan amendments will be scheduled. Um, but again, you know, stay tuned. They're also broadcast on channel 16 as well as live over the Internet. Um, if you look, if you go onto the website for Fairfax County, you type in channel 16, you can kind of find it there if you if you want to do that. But if you want to speak, um, I always encourage if you want to sign up and show up in person, you can do so. I believe there's also an ability to still uh, sign up and be able to call in, um, but you'd have to email the Planning Commission and kind of figure out the rules from there. After that, we are scheduled for the Board of Supervisors public hearing on March 21st again at 4 p.m. Um, within the 4 p.m. time slot. So uh, Oaks trustee, I'm just going to give you, I'm going to leave it open to see if you can kind of enable your microphone. We have somebody else that has ra uh, raised their hand. Joe, uh, I'm going to enable your microphone. Yeah, uh, good evening. Um, mm -hmm. see, there was a suggestion um, a long time ago on the bike lanes to just have one bike lane, but one bike lane with a guardrail. And some people thought that would be much safer than with the issue of crossing the street, the guardrail would be more important. But uh, what happened to that suggestion? Was that a suggestion as part of this study and planning process? I don't recall that being rec or recommended or, or proposed. So I think Tom, in the old plan, we had a park, we had trail on one side of the parkway. The th I think the course of thinking has happened throughout this particular study is that that's not really appropriate for this type of uh, facility, this type of road. It's a little bit hard for people to cross sometimes, uh, especially on pet or uh, by walking across, even if we have signalized intersections. So therefore, if we have a, sh a shared facility on both sides of the road, then people can travel up and down the corridor without having to worry about crossing the road. 
So the recommendation is changing with this study to add a shared use path or equivalent on both sides of the road. OK. We have somebody else that has raised their hand. Oh, one moment. Bill, Bill Sinat, I'm sorry if I messed up your last name. I did not mean to. Uh, your microphone's enabled. OK, can you hear me OK? Yes, you can. Yeah, I got a hold of the Oaks trustee and I, I tried to get find out what his what his question was because he's having a hard time getting through to you. And his question was related to diagram T1 on the Twin Lakes community, something or other, page 73-107. Support? I hope I got that right. Twin branch. That would be the center bill, right? Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can't find it on the study. OK, I'm 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 set. The, I'm, I'm talking to him right now, Steve. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I think it's in our report. Can, can you hear Steve? I mean, the Oaks trustee. No. Yes, here. No, he can't hear you. Go ahead. Okay, he's going to pass on it because it's too tough to pass the stuff through to you. Thank you very much anyway. He, he can feel free to send me an email. If anyone, okay, email, tonight, email if anyone that wants to ask questions, Please feel free uh, before the end of the evening. I'll, I'll put my contact information back up. I can do that right now. OK, uh, thank you very much. He puts your contact information up. See if you send him an email. OK, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. I do not see any more people with their hands raised. Uh, we get an uh, they will email us about the service drive ordinance question. We'll make sure to answer that. Um, does anybody else have any questions or anything for tonight? If not, we want to say thank you very much again for attending the public meeting. We look forward to being able to add these to the comprehensive plan, assuming that the planning commission and the board recommend uh, approval. So again, thank you very much. And with that, have a good rest of the evening. All right. Thank you.